Hello there, good morning everybody. How are you today? What's your weather like? Whereabouts in the world are you? Is it your first time here? That's the bombardment of questions for you this morning. Um, hi Beverly, hi Dorothy and Lynn on Facebook. Hi Megan and Mandy. Sunny in Devon, it's lovely here. Lovely. Apparently we're going to have thunderstorms later on. But, yeah. um, hi Margaret, sunshine's beautiful she says. Morning Heather and Debbie and Pam and Deborah and Jane. Beautiful day in Essex she says. Um, hi Jackie, sorry if I miss anybody. Messages are coming through rather quickly this morning. Hi Zoe. Um, Sunny in Musselburgh, says Elizabeth. Um, okay, so in a bit, I'm going to make a drawstring bag um, which has a gusset, so it's a little bit different and it's got a handle. Um, so that's what we're going to be making later on today. I have made a video because um, I think it might be quite a long one, you might get bored. Um, so that's going to be uploaded onto YouTube at half past 12. So probably just after we finish today, that's going to be that. Hi Elizabeth, Sunny in Bolton says, um, says Susan, lovely North Yorkshire. Hi Maxine, hi Tilly, hi Elizabeth, hi Laura Harris um, and Sarah, hello to you. Um, I have got some new fabrics to show you and I wanted to show you the new downloads as well. Uh, Rachel's excited about the drawstring bag. Hello, um, Solveig, is that in Norway? Hello, hello Janet. And Sue's in Australia, hello to you. Um, Trish is new to the channel, welcome along. Trisha, we're here twice a week on a Saturday morning at 11 o'clock and a Wednesday afternoon at 4 o'clock, so it'd be nice to see you again. Um, hi Rita, Linda, I'm very good, thank you. Um, bored now, never. Dorothy? <laughs> Um, hi Julie in Ilkley and Yvonne, hello to you, hi Mandy. Um, so let, let me show you the downloads first because we've, as we've got the subject of bags in our mind, um, we've got a couple. Now these have been ever so popular already, I just haven't had a chance to show you. I did show you the Half Moon last week but uh, we had a bit of a problem with the internet, did we not? So I don't think you get to see it, but that's it. Um, so it's a, a useful little pouch. Almost a semicircle in shape, fully lined, and there is um, a pattern for this one as well. So you will need to print it off. You will need to print off the pattern for that one. But I think that's really sweet. It's really pretty. And that is made with, I can't remember what it's called, the South American Fabric Bundle that we've got on the website. You'll be able to make loads out of that. Hello, Leslie. Hello, Phyllis. Hello, Carol. Hello, Angela. Hello, Anne and Joella. And Nana knits a lot in Florida. Hi Ali, she's in the uh, west of Western Australia. So that's the half moon pouch, again that's a download. And this is the one that went on the other day, which is the Thai side tote. And I wanted to show you that because it's quite big and you might not get that impression when you have a look at the picture. Um, no pattern for this one, so you don't have to print it off. So if you haven't got a printer, that's ideal. It ties at the side with a couple of little bows, so it opens up so it's quite deep if you've got big things to pop in there. And it has a patch pocket on the inside as well. You could add more if you wanted to. Um, I love this fabric as well. This is the Parisian Houses. It's canvas, which I think works really well for a big bag because it gives it a little bit of sturdiness. Although I have used H640 on that as well, so it has got some interfacing with it. Um, so that's that one. We will have a download going on maybe next week because the designer is still working on the pattern at the moment, but we do have the fabrics. And it's this one. It's a Japanese knot bag. Um, there will be a pattern for this one. Um, in fact, I think there are, we have to join it together. There's one, two, that maybe, maybe four pattern pieces for this one, just for the top. No pattern for the bottom, because that's huge. And a Japanese knot bag, if you weren't aware, does this. But it's not on the website yet, but I wanted to show you because the brand new fabric that I've used is on the website. So that's reversible. If you've made Japanese knot bags before, you know there's always a little bit of an issue of turning through. So I've figured out an easy way for you to do it. It's the same way that you would make a waistcoat. Um, so you have a seam at the back. And, uh, and again, that's reversible. Um, I do put a few tips on the instructions as well, actually, because if you use, if you use this fabric, which is 140 wide, um, and it's non-directional, you only need half a metre. If you're using a directional fabric, you're going to need a metre. So just FYI, just to let you know. So that's what I've used there. Now, the fabric 
It's a rain oh, it's rainy in Cyprus. Oh, well, no. Um, hello, Donna in South Carolina. Janet says it's a bit cold tonight. Um, you know, while, while you're there, I'm just going to mute the volume on my PC because uh, something's bound to ding. Windy and sandy in Saudi, says Anne-Marie. Um, Deborah Jane's in Glastonbury. Hello to you too. Uh, I've downloaded this one. As, um, mm. Yes, Susan, I'm getting the... Um, my web designer's looking at that over the weekend. Um, what's sold out? What's sold out, Len? Sorry, I, I'm, I didn't see what sold out. I didn't think anything would have gone that quickly. Um, I don't know if the Debbie could put a who will suit, i.e. one tick, easy beginner, five ticks, advance. That's a good idea, Sarah. Um, I think we do that on Half Yard Club, don't we? Um, yes, the downloads, they should go into your account. So as soon as you place your order, it'll confirm your order and there will be as many downloads as you need for the pattern or the instructions there on the website. Some of you aren't getting them and I don't know why. Because um, I've placed a few orders myself and everything's appeared as it should be. But I am getting the web designer to have a look at that. But if you don't get all of your downloads immediately, let me know and I'll email them to you. Okay. So if you go to the, um, the customer... Um, oh, what's going on with YouTube now? Are we still there? Oh, it says YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain a smooth streaming. Um, I don't know what the issue with that is. I don't understand that, but I've got a big yellow bar, so hopefully, hopefully you can still see me. Um, right. Oh, we don't have a Lisa this morning. So do excuse me while I just do a little bit of housekeeping on YouTube. Um... Oh, come on, open up. IG is on this channel. Yep, sorry about that. I've normally got um, somebody monitoring um, any kind of um, advertising or rude comments or anything like that, but I've got to do it myself. So give me a shout if you see anything untowards on YouTube, if you don't mind. Um, Cocoa is recovering slowly, two and a half weeks into... Oh, oh back to the... Oh, I hope she goes, my it should be fine. Um, back to those uh, downloads again. You should also receive an email. Um, so they should be on your account and they should be uh, with you via email as well. When the email comes through, there'll, there'll be... Um, it'll say the description of the product that you've bought. If you click on that, it takes you back to the website but next to that there'll be a, a it'll say download and then you can download them all from there as well but again do let me know Parisian fabric is sold out is it and we've got more on order um, I know that's on order so hopefully within the next couple of days that should be that should be with us um, yes yeah, so d d definitely we'll get more of that in stock I thought you meant the new stuff I haven't even shown you yet <laughs> okay let me have it. I need to have a look again on, on the website to see what these are called because they are absolutely brand new. Um, Karen bought the pattern for the Japanese knot bag. Lovely to me. Oh, thank you. She's going to take it to the beach when she goes away. Um, Lisa's babysitting. Um, her son and his girlfriend are having a baby today. So she's looking after the grandchildren. Thank you, Mandy. Um, funny that, isn't it? In bed. Oh no, Rosina's got COVID. Oh, thank you, Martine. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for your help on that. I don't spot them all because there's so many coming in. Um, we don't get that very often, do we? Anyway, um, somebody's wasting their time this morning. So let me just get my phone and have a look at the website. A Liberty Print. I don't know, and no, I know it's not a Liberty Print. It's a Marks and Spencer's print. <laughs> um, Need to, yes, need to have a look at YouTube. I'm not sure what the issue is there, but we'll sort that out. So, barley, forest green flowers. This is a rayon mix. So, it's a cotton. Oh, that looks a bit dark up there, doesn't it? Um, let me show you that way, because it's actually quite quite bright. Um, and this is a rayon mix. Now, we've been asked for more dressmaking fabric. So, we're giving you more dressmaking fabric. So, this is, uh, well, it's lovely for dressmaking. Rayon is made from... Um, plants um, so it's all natural fibers so it's nice and lightweight and breathable it's not see-through at all or anything like that but it does have a really nice kind of print to it it's almost like a linen print you've got these tiny little vine leaves on here as well it's 140 wide um, so perfect for dressmaking whether it's a blouse or a skirt or a dress or or, or whatever it is 
Hello, Dina. Oh, Jane's going to be a nana again. That's going to make five. I think I think my uh, collection stop, uh, stops at three at the moment. I keep crossing my fingers, but you never know. But yeah, congratulations to you. I feel so much better, Ali. Thank you. It took two weeks. Long time, that one, isn't it? Um, not only Spanish, but I don't know. Okay, thank you, Alexis. Didn't realise that. I shall... Um, I shall look out for any more messages. Right. These are the ones that I made the Japanese knot bag out of. And again, this is that rayon mix. I'll show you from that side. Um, isn't that gorgeous? This one is called, they're right at the top of the new ins page. It's um, barley blue. Barley blue flowers for this one. It's, um, so it's really nice and cool. It's not flimsy and see-through. So if you did want to make a skirt, you're probably not going to want a, an underskirt or a lining or anything with it. But it's a perfect fabric for summertime because it's nice and cool. And again, it's a wider one. It's 140 wide, so great for dressmaking. Um, Sue's just finished the barrel makeup bag. You're going to find that really useful. I do like that one. Um, sunny and Warminster. I have 32 in the UK and one here in Australia. Oh, I missed that one. What you got? A Jeanette sewing wonky house. Well, okay then. This is the mandala one. I think is it just green mandala? Yep, barley green mandala fabric, and it's that rayon mix again. So you've got that really comfortable. Um, Linda's grandchild number thirteen is on the way. Oh gosh, for the bias skirt, Deirdre, I used. Um, a uh, de viscose um, lawn would be perfect and um, this would make a lovely skirt remember you do have to cut on the bias for that skirt so um, and that's that's absolutely perfect so any of the oh actually we've got some new ones some new uh, lady macawa which uh, which would be absolutely perfect as well let me see if i can find this sorry lady McElroy, not lady McEl. Um so these are viscoses so these would all be suitable love these um these have got a bit more of a drape so you could make the skirt out of that no problem these would hang a little bit more fluid love these literally gone on the website this morning this is my favorite one you have to have a favorite and this one is I'll have a look in a minute why did i click on that let's go back sorry i'm not um I don't actually put these on, so I can't remember the names of everything. I've gone off that. There we go. This is the Lady McElroy Palace Gardens Pine Crepe. So it's viscose. I think it's viscose. Might be polyester. Um, but crepe has a nice texture to it. Um, again, it's a bit dark there. Let's go this way. So it's almost like um, a bubbly texture um, to this one. But it's really fluid. It's really, really soft. So it's really comfortable to wear again. Right, so let's do that. And then the second one I have for you is this one, which is the Retro Blooms Viscose. Thank you, Rosina. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Ali. Um, really gorgeous colours. It's really deep navy in the background and then it's um got all these gorgeous bright colors on there as well i wish lisa was here today um so that's that and then the final one here is what's this one called this one's violet florette viscose and again, it's just it's just got a lovely drape to it. And if I show you the width on this as well, I need a couple of spanners and a sledgehammer today, I think. Um, it's actually it's more of a twill, this one, because it's got a diagonal weave to it, which is quite unusual. But it's again, it's one of those really fluid, lightweight fabrics. Great for a wedding dress. And why not? Thanks, Alexis. Um, the bird, Linda, I love that bird one. That's my favourite one. 
out of the three but aren't they they're quite retro aren't they quite ni 1970s kind of look which is very much in fact haven't been shopping for a long time um well months but um last time i went into um a fashion store they were selling things that i used to wear in the 70s they got tank tops and flared trousers and platform shoes and it was like going back in time i thought it was in a, a vintage clothes shop and i was only in zara yeah, I think so as well, Kate. Yeah, the bird. I know, I know. I, I have, I have a feeling. Got a feeling. <gasps> that one's going to go really, really quickly. Um, particularly because um, I don't know. It's just really, really classy. And a lot of you are going to be buying two, two and a half meters to make that skirt with. I know, so that's going to go pretty quickly. <gasps> right, that's it for new fab. No, no, not no, oh, no, not new fabrics. Um, one that I showed you last week, but I had a question from Karen asking if we had a lemon that would go with the Lullaby Dreams fabrics, and yes, we do. So that was the and the fabric, and it's got the clouds which matches as well, and we do have the perfect lemon that goes with that one. So yeah, that's so that's what we got. We do have a mint fabric, but it didn't match well enough. But the, the lemon, I think, goes really, really well. Um, Jean says she's a 70s. I know. That era, what would we like? <laughs> we look great. We had our feather cuts hair and our flared jeans and our tank tops and our, our big collars on. Our, do you remember those collars that came right down like this? And, oh, what else did we wear? Um, I had a corduroy dress, which was all gathered at the top and stuck out like a tent. I loved that dress. <laughs> oh, 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 who's had a surgery? Oh, I've missed that one. Yes, Sally Ann, it will be available. It's on order. So hopefully early next week uh, we'll be able to get that back again. I know Sarah, she is very good at fabrics. Um, she's away at the moment, so we weren't, we weren't going to be putting new fabrics on. There they are, she can't stop. Okay, shall we do a bit of sewing? Now remember, I have, um, I have made the video um, of making this very bag and all of the measurements and everything will be in the description box underneath the video on YouTube, not this one, um, but the one that's going to be loaded in about an hour or so. Uh, the second project on Half Yard Club. Oh, I've got that to show you as well. Um, second Half Yard Club project of the month is a tool belt which i was thinking I've, I've made it with some of my sewing machine fabric um because i thought it was handy for sewing. if your pockets aren't big enough <laughs> even if you walk in your dog and your pockets aren't big enough or you don't have a pocket this is really useful it's got the big pocket at the back it's got a, a, a medium pocket and then it's got a little one at the front as well so whether it's your house cleaning bits and bobs or your gardening um, or you want to keep your sewing things in there and it's got an adjustable strap you know even if you're at a craft fair and you want to keep some bits and bobs in there uh, maybe pens and I don't know loose change your mobile phone that kind of thing um, and it is I do explain in the in the video um, or in the instructions but that's for right-handed and then if you mirror image the big pocket then you can make it for left-handed as well or there's no reason because I mean this kind of slides along there's no reason why you couldn't put two pockets on and have one each side it depends how much you want to fill your pockets with doesn't it so yes that'll be going out tomorrow won't it that is your second project of the month and remember if you do want to join if you um if you want to have a month for free then um oh, need to unpick that um use the code welcome in capital letters um when you go through to check out on the half yard sewing club page lisa normally puts all this on youtube for me doesn't she um but it's halfyardsewingclub.com use the word welcome and then you can have a look around for a whole month you will have access to 48 projects from the day that you join because we do two projects a month one with video one without plus your um block of the month so that's that's three projects in effect and they stay on the website for two years and for five pounds 99 i think it's great value for money I, I was actually i was actually beginning to question that 5.99 um the skirts that let me show you that we had as the main project 
it's just down here this month I was thinking there isn't a pattern for this I'll explain how to measure yourself to make it so it's actually quite simple this is one that's cut on the bias and we've got side seam pockets in there as well um, but if you were to buy a pattern for that it'll probably cost you what 9 10 11 12 pounds something like that so if you join the club you get this for free no for five pounds 99 and then you get another 47 projects for nothing I know <laughs> anyway enough about the club um, that's another half year oh thank you a demo on shearing um, I could do a demo on shearing I don't think I've got any here with me Jen let me just have a look should we do that on Wednesday right time of year isn't it to be making things with shearing let me just check no I haven't got any here but yes, yeah, so, okay, let's do shearing, because on, on Wednesdays we're going to be doing more technique-paced things. So shearing's a good one. Rosina wants shearing as well. Blame the sewing bee. Have they, I don't, I don't watch it. Have they been doing shearing? Um, I, oh, I don't want to be treading on anybody. Did they actually explain to you how to do it, or was it just a project? I don't watch sewing bee. It's not my, it's not my kind of thing. Um, I sew all day, and I don't really want to watch somebody else doing it later. Um, I know a lot of you are huge fans, but I, I, I don't, I don't watch it. Um, G baby's looking for bugs. No, okay, Jen. She wants to make her daughter Rose some um, some summer dresses, like the ones that Mum used to make for her. So yes, we can we can definitely do that. So that'll be Wednesday at four o'clock. I'm glad you're sorting me out with what I'm doing because I, I I forget. Um, hello, Robin in Kansas. Welcome along. Hello, D. <laughs> Myra says, I don't watch either. I'd want to win. I'd, I'd find it interesting if it was more of a... Um, it's the competition side of it I don't like, and the rush and the deadlines, and you've got, you've got two hours to make a, a ball gown, or I'd rather just have somebody explain how they'd... But then that wouldn't make good TV, would it? That'd just be interesting for me, and there's probably something on YouTube anyway. Um, Shearing would be good, said Rachel, need to make a jubilee dress for my granddaughter. Oh, it's raining in Brisbane. <gasps> Lots of flood. Oh, no. First time watching. Hello, Christine. Welcome along. Hopefully it won't be your last time watching. Um, yes, Annette, Parisian Houses is, is, um, is on order. So hopefully early next week. Um, What's what, what shearing? Shearing, it, it's actually it's S -H -I -R -R, S-H-I-R-R-Shearing, and it's the... Um, it's rows of elastic thread. Like, do you remember boob tubes? Boob tubes were made with shearing elastic. So it's rows and rows and rows of elastic. Um, but you use, let's do it on Wednesday. Um, you put the, uh, you buy the elastic ship, shearing elastic. You can buy it in different colours. I know a lot of places only do black and white. I've got some orange somewhere. So if you look around, you can find different colours. Um, and you use it in the bobbin. And when you sew, it just gathers all the fabric up. So you get, get a... I haven't got anything like that to show you. But it's quite nice. It's very fashionable at the moment, actually, isn't it? Um, but it's nice to do around a cuff. And, you know, the, the quite poofy sleeves are very fashionable at the moment, aren't they? So it's a nice way to, to finish that off as well. Sunrise. Beautiful sunrise in upstate New York. Oh, how lovely. Um, show how you're doing it from start to finish, a dress pattern. i tell you what we could do, Jen. Um, in, have you got my um, dressmaking book? The Sewing Room Secrets Dressmaking Beginner's Guide. There is a little dress in there using shearing elastic um, and it's just got two straps over the top. We could do that from start to finish because that's quite simple. Don't know about using a pattern. <gasps> oh, was it? oh, yeah, sh uh, the shearing elastic bathing. They were the thing, weren't they? I was looking through some old photos the other day and actually found one of myself wearing one of those. Um, my mum told me to do it all by hand. Oh, Jenny, that must have taken ages. Um, don't seem to get notifications. I'm, I'm not in control of that, Jill. I don't know. I don't know what happens there. I don't know if there's anybody you could um, contact at Facebook. What's iPlayer? I don't, I don't know. Don't know. I don't do that. Um, made shoes by sewing fabrics. So, so shearing on on the Great British Sewing Bee last Wednesday. It'll be on iPlayer. I suppose it's a catch-up kind of thing, I suppose, then, isn't it? 
Um, they made shoes by sewing fabric to soles. Love that. Oh, you can buy those, can't you? Like um, espadrille type things. I might have a look at doing that. That's a nice idea. Anyway, Sue's finished making Robin the Ragdoll. His hair took me a while, but worth it. He is. He is worth it. It's worth doing the hair like that. <laughs> that was the thing with bathing costumes made of shearing elastic. They did go a little bit baggy when wet, did they not? <laughs> anyway, let's do some sewing. So, um, I'll give you the measurements briefly. Hi, Bob. Hey, sweetie, is it hot outside? Are you all panty? You're dribbling on the floor, puppy. I think it's too hot outside. She's come for a lie down on a cold floor. Um, I'll give you the measurements quickly, and I'm waving my ruler at you. I'll give you the measurements quickly in inches, but again, if you have a look on the um, on YouTube after half past twelve, all the measurements in, in detail will be there anyway. Um, Rita's bought soles, but hasn't made. I've never made them before, but nice to have a play with. Um, okay, so this one is. 11 by nine and a half and I have two outer pieces and two lining pieces and they both measure the same and I fussy cut that one it's really pretty isn't it this is the art gallery fabrics um, rose water ballet and I'm making the strap and the gusset from um, flora and fauna again that's art gallery fabrics FYI so I've got front and back and two lining pieces. Then I've got two pieces for the channel which measure three inches by eight inches. I have two pieces, one from outer and one from lining for the gusset. And these measure two and a half inches by 30 inches. And then finally, I've got the strap, which is four inches by, I can't remember. I can't remember how long that is. Let me give you some measure. I don't you normally use this rule. 12. So 17 inches for that one. Can't remember exactly. So the first thing we're going to do is to make up the channels. So I'm simply going to fold the ends over. I'm going to fold that once by about a quarter of an inch and sew straight across. Right, so might have to have a look at those shoes on sewing bee then. I didn't know they did stuff like that. And same on each of the short ends of these. <laughs> oh, Anita, no, don't don't feel guilty sitting washing with a cuppa. Um, it's um, we, we, it's educational, so so um, treat it as your um, your studying. So you're not just lazing around having a cuppa on a Saturday morning, you're actually studying. Uh, explain about the piping thing you mentioned on Wednesday, which makes piping easier. Oh, Sarah, it's called a piping wizard. Um, it's an, a sim simplicity one. They have a range called Easy, which is EZ. So maybe if you put it into um, a search engine or have a look on Amazon or somewhere like that, they are quite expensive. But it's basically a, a piece of perspex with grooves down it which are a quarter of an inch and an eighth of an inch away from the edge so when you've got your piping so say so that's your piping and there's your fabric going over it you slip this thing over the piping side and it's got a guide to as you can how you can cut your seam allowance on it and um, they're only about that big you know they're not they're not massive but i, I did think they were quite expensive um haven't got mine here to show you it's down at the uh, down at the house um, wish you could watch the sewing bee in the US. Can you not watch it? Is not, can you not get? Is it on? I don't know. On on the internet anywhere? Have they got a, a website? Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Um, oh, daughter's on her way. Oh, Pamela, off you go then, Pamela. See you again on Wednesday, hopefully. Thank you, Janet. Right, just wait for that to heat up. So oh, oh, all I'm doing, fold in half and press, okay? And that's the, what the ribbon's going to go through. What colour is the lining? Um, oh, that, oh, on the, the lining, 
the same as you used on the bag you did on the download. Oh, which lining? Which bag? Which bag? On the download. This one isn't the download, so the, the one I used on the Parisienne is navy poplin. And this one is a reversible bag, so I've used the mandala on the inside and the flowers on the outside. This is, if this is the lining that you meant, then this one is the premium poplin in rust orange. And if it was this one, I used um, fuchsia pink cotton. I think that's covered all of them. Is that all right? Hello, Marina in Portugal. <laughs> Am I a guilty pleasure? I've never been called a guilty pleasure before. My mother used to call me temptation. She was, um, she was very frugal, my mother. Didn't like spending the money. And um, when uh, me and Gary got married, which is 25 years ago, um, I, took, I made her go shopping to buy something to wear because um, she'd have just worn something old otherwise. Um, and she'd only go to Derby Market. We had to go to the market because it's cheaper. And um, I pulled out a really lovely suit for her, which she did actually buy in the end, like a pastel coloured suit. Um, and when she saw the price, she just went, Ah, Deborah, you are temptation. I'm quite happy to be temptation, thank you very much. So, yes, my mother called me temptation. <laughs> um, oh, here we go again. Um, the one, oh, the one behind me, just, just hold, hold the line a second. Oh, this one, the curved top one. So I forgot that was there. That is the caramel canvas. So, oh, oh, limbo. So caramel canvas on, on the inside and the, this is on order again as well, the um, modern leaves in, I thought I'd use the sage on that one, can't remember. They're very similar. Uh, modern leaves, anyway, the sage and grey. I think that one's the sage. But uh, yeah, the, the caramel canvas goes perfectly with that one. So that's, that's what that one is. Right. So, first thing to do, in fact, while we're here, while I've got the iron on, let me make up the strap as well. So can you see this a hundred times before? So we're going to fold the strap to the centre, to the centre again. Just like a piece of bias binding. Here we go. So in half like so. And then in half again. And there we go. And then... Oh, I did! Dorothy, yes! Sorry, I forgot to mention that completely. On the outer pieces, I used G700, so I've used a woven stabiliser. Um, so on the front and the back, and on one of the gusset pieces. Oh, thank you for doing that. Um, so yes, it, it's um, a Villiesle G700. We've got those on the website. And I've used that one deliberately because I want to gather this because it's a drawstring. And you find if you're going to use something like a fusible fleece or a wadding, um, it can be a little bit bulky. But I, did want it, I didn't want it too flimsy, which is why I've used that one. So yeah, it's a woven one and it's just a G700 or just a medium or a lightweight interfacing would work really well with those. Hello, Rachel, finally catching us live. Um, right, let's fold this to the centre. Um, oh dear yeah, Jane in the Eagle Centre, I know. I used to hate it when I was a kid. Um, we didn't get much further than the market, but we used to buy everything off that market. And I can remember my mum used to make me walk in front so she could see where I was. And I'd drag my heels on the floor and she'd push me every now and again. Push me every now and again. I hated the bus journey, I hated the shopping. Love shopping now. <laughs> but you know, when she, this is going to sound awful. When she was older, because um, she was 80 when my mum died, that was um, 20 years ago, she would have been 100 this year. Um, but when she got older, she used a shuffle. And it was so tempting to just give her a push. You're dragging your feet. I never did push my elderly mother, I have to say. It was just tempting. <laughs> that would have shown her. Um, 
Oh, which which dress is, is that? She's um, oh, she made a pair, pair a, a self a pair of really nice shorts from the um, the double gauze fabric as well. That was really nice. Um, oh, Bob's in and out again. I can't remember what other fabric she used. She's made so many dresses to go away. Oh, she she made a beautiful dress from the Life in Venice viscose. Um, I don't know if she's got a picture of that one or not. Um. <laughs> You're answering each other. I'm, I'm ever so pleased when you answer each other's questions because I don't always get to see them. And I don't want you to think that I'm being rude by not answering you. Just going to sew along each side of that one and then that's the strap done. Uh, any more chicken ideas projects? Love your phone holder and doorstop. I haven't, I haven't put any thought into chickens for a while. Uh, Darcy, let's have a think about chickens. Anybody got any sewing chicken ideas? Hello, Doris in New Jersey. <laughs> I know, Jim. She'd have done the same to me. Right, so, so I'm just sewing down each side, just sewing in straight lines. So talk commenced yourselves for a while. Writing a dressmaking book. Um, Kim, it may be on the cards. The thing with the, um, with the dressmaking, she might do one for kids, um, is the patterns, which can make a book very costly. Um, but yeah, she's working. She's working on something. Just sewing in straight lines, really. There we go. Okay, that's that out of the way. A pattern for shorts. There's a thought. I'm, I can't, mm, I'm not a pattern drafter. So I, I can do patterns for bags and things like that. But when it comes to grading and sizing and, and fitting for lots of different sizes, I have to pass that on to, on to somebody else. Um, the colour of the lining of the curtain top bag. Joyce, I hope you saw that. It's the um, caramel canvas I used. It's, um, it's, it's quite a nice heavy one. In the process of buying update sewing machines. Oh, Julie, that's a treat. I haven't done a new sewing machine for a long time. Wonky chicken houses. <laughs> I like that idea. Right, I'm going to round off the bottom. Now, in the instructions, just make sure I've got that the right way around, I do um, explain, or in the video, that the gusset is going to be too long. All right? So that will need to be cut down. And the reason for that, I'm going to curve the corners here just by drawing around a template. Your template might not be the same as my template. Um, so that, that would affect the size of the, or the length of the gusset. So that's why I make it too long so that we know that everybody's is going to fit. So scissors are around somewhere. Hello, Joyce in Melbourne in Florida. Welcome along this morning. Go around here. And then we'll do the same on the two lining pieces. The seaside bag jill is one of the projects from Half Yard Club. It's one of the older ones. So, I mean, you can go and join. Use your welcome code for free and have a look. Then if you don't want any of the other projects, you can just opt out. I shouldn't say that, should I? Uh, could you possibly talk about sewing with leather and faux leather on one of your Wednesday shows? Um, I don't work with leather, Trudy, um, but faux leather, yes, definitely. want to make pouches and I've never sewn with it before. Thanks, Trudy. The only thing I'd say with leather is to use a leather needle. You don't need it with faux leather, but um, use a leather needle for that because leather is a um, skin. Um, and it kind of mm, heals itself. Um, so a, a leather needle has a, a chisel shaped point to it and it's, it's quite firm. So it makes a small slit in the leather. So when the thread goes through, there's less um, uh, kind of drag. It doesn't pull so much, there's less friction. Um, but then the, the leather will kind of seal itself around the thread. It, it won't make itself completely waterproof or anything like that, but it will close over the thread somewhat. But don't use that on faux leather because you'll just end up with a slip instead of a hole. That's so just for leather, use a leather needle. But it's not something that I sew with or wear or use if I can possibly help it myself, but yeah. 
there. That's another topic. Right. So I've rounded off the bottom of those two. And then we're going to, what should we do next? Let's put these onto the outer pieces first. So I'm going to fold this in half, tidy up a little bit. Um, and just mark the centre. And then fold in half and mark the centre. Line up those two points and we're going to sew straight across the top. And we'll do the same on the other piece. I'm going to sew quite close to the edge so it's kind of within the seam allowance. Hello model is in, uh, in Hungary. Welcome along. Um, all right, let's do that. And then we'll do the same with the opposite side. So that on there. So we'll mark the centre. I'm just going to do... Oh, sorry about that. Big sneeze. Not something you wanted to hear, so I muted it. So sorry about that. Um, received some of book on Thursday. Oh, lovely, Olive. I'm glad you got it. And um, the tie bag, the side tie, that, that one, is a download on the Debbie Shaw Sewing website. So if you just go to downloads at the top of the page, you'll see it there. And the Japanese knot bag, um, probably go back on when Kim gets back on Thursday. Um, and as I've used a jeans needle with faux leather. Um, that, that's absolutely fine, Anna. Jeans needles are strong needles. So if you've got a thicker fabric, no matter what the fabric is, um, could be canvas, or, or of course denim, um, or thank you, Anne. Um, then use your jeans needle. And, and if you've got lots of layers of fabric as well, like, that can, can help too. Um, Susan's sat in his, in his son's garden watching. <gasps> Cold's just about gone, Susan. I have a bit of a, a moment in the mornings. But yeah, that's fun. Just a blast of ages. Hello, Zakaya in Michigan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all the blessing yous. A normal needle for, for faux leather. Yeah, I normally do. Um, do you know? Actually, no, I'd normally use a denim one because that seems to be what's um, in my machine most of the time, to be honest. Um, but try it. Right, what we're going to do now is to fit the gusset. So I do need pins for this. So we're going to line at one edge here and pin. Is it coffee time? Morning, cappuccino. I don't like cappuccino. You never bring me did cappuccino. Did somebody say that we were wonky? No. No, I think they did. And they're right. Are we wonky? Yeah. Did somebody say we're wonky? Yeah. Are we wonky? No. Have you got... Um... I don't know what I've done. Oh, there we go. Thank you. My dog keeps coming in panting. <laughs> Is it hot out there? <laughs> I'm just going to put a blanket down. Thank you. Coffee time. OK, so, whoop, whoop, oh, calling the dog. Um, so, I'll move you out of the way there. OK. Um, is it best to use a, a walking foot when sewing faux leather? Um, surely, yes, you can use a walking foot if you've got one. I wouldn't rush out and buy one because they're about £30. I think that's rather expensive. Um, or you could use a non-stick foot, um, sometimes called a Teflon foot. don't think I've got one in here. Nope. Um, they're normally grey or white, plasticky things, depending on what, what brand your sewing machine is. Um, or if you've got a roller foot. A roller foot would work well as well, um, but only if you're top stitching, because your faux leather will have um, like a knitted back to it, so it has a little bit of give. And if you're just sewing two pieces right sides together, then that's fine. It's only like the the top side, the faux leather side, that may stick to the bottom of your foot. Won't stick to the bottom of the machine because you've got your feed dogs under there, but it might stick to your foot. But if you're just sewing seams and not top stitching, you don't need anything, right? Now, as I'm coming up to the curve here. I'm just going to snip into the seam allowance and that's going to allow me to go around the curve more easily. So I'm just snipping about an eighth of an inch or so. And then when we go around the curve, that all opens up. I don't know if you can see that. 
let's, uh, let's have another few pins in here. Hello, Patty from Alabama. How did you make the beach bag? That, that, that again, Rita, is a, a project on the Half Yard Club. So you'll have all of your instructions and patterns for the beach huts and everything on there. A small dog carrying tote. No, Carol, I haven't. <laughs> Um, because um, it's, it's not something that I'd use because I'd never be able to lift Bobbin up, so no, I haven't really thought about bags to carry dogs in. Um, I'm sure there'll be something on YouTube. Let's snip around here. And then we'll pin. Now we need to do this on all four bits, so you're going to have to bear with me because this is going to take a little while. Cause, so both sides of the bag plus both sides of the line and we need to pin and snip every single piece. Hello Melody in Missouri, welcome along. Um, Maddie is now going to be the beginning of December, which I, I wasn't best pleased about to be honest because I think a lot of people would want to make her for Christmas so you're going to have to be quick if you want to make her as a Christmas present but um, out of my hands I'm afraid. It's all ready and finished and ready to go, but it's just um, publishers trying to fit it in. Right, so I'm sewing with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you don't sew over the end of the pins. And nice and carefully around the curved piece because we don't want any kind of puckering or gathering in the fabric. Let's take that pin out. Should have been from this side, really, shouldn't I? That would, have, that would have been easier. So again, just matching the edges. You can come out. But this curved seam is going to form the shape of your bag. So take your time going around that curve and make sure that it's a curvy curve. And as I said earlier, your gusset is going to be too long. That is deliberate. Right, let's whip out these pins. And then I'm just going to flip it over and have a look at those corner seams and just make sure I'm happy with that. And then we'll do the same with the second side. So start from the end where you started before, not from this end, else that won't match up. And just like before, I'll have a few pins. Just coming up to that curve bit again, so I'm going to snip into the curve. Yeah, no Lisa today, she's babysitting, she's got, um, she's got the grandkids while her new grandchild is being born. So I've told her to text me as soon as um, as soon as she has any news. Um, oh, Debbie's just bought our book. Thank you very much. Right, so around here. And then coming up to the next curve again. I am rushing this a little bit because you, you're going to watch me do this four times, so you're going to get really bored. Um, but take your time if you're going to do this at home. Right. And lots of pins. There we go, and around here. And then we'll need to do the same on, on the lining as well. Once it um, kind of comes together, it does the, the construction is actually quite quickly Right, and back down to the end. And then we'll sew this bit. What do I enjoy making the most? Do you know, uh, sorry, that's, that's Trina. Hi, Trina. Um, I like making bags. I make so many bags and try and make them all different. Um, but what I like most about it is the figuring out. So like with the, the tie side bag, I didn't want, when you pull the ties, I didn't want this section to gather but I wanted it to look as though the ties go all the way around. So it's figuring it out um, and figuring out where the, um, the pockets are going to go and how many on the inside, figuring out if I want a square bottom or a round bottom um, and 
with this one how to actually fit that gusset and put a handle on the top because we you know all my drawstring bags are all over the place. I've made hundreds of them. Um, but to have one that you could actually use as a handbag as well. So how long does that need to be so actually go over your shoulder? And that, that's what I love about it. It's, it's almost like the, the mathematics of sewing. Love figuring stuff out and constructing something that ends up being three dimensional when it starts off as a two dimensional piece of fabric. That's what I like about it. Um, I like doing homewares as well. Uh, the project for next month for the Half Yard Club is a pair of um, tie top curtains, lined tie top curtains. And um, as I was making that, I used to do so much of this for the home. I'd, I'd change the curtains for the summer and the winter, and every time I made a new cushion, I could have a new pair of curtains to match it. I haven't done it for such a long time, I really enjoyed doing that. So, yeah, cush cushions and curtains and homewares. Oh, I'll tell you what I used to, I, I like everything. Um, I used to do a lot of upholstery. I'd, I've probably told you before, I, I, I studied upholstery. Um, and that's a very different kind of sewing. Because with that one, um, it's the, the, the taking off the old covers and getting the pliers out and the pincers and the taking pins and tacks and, and then recovering and hammering in the new tacks and stapling. It's, it's a very physical form of sewing, but that I used, I used to really like as well. But again, everything's just so time-consuming, isn't it? I don't even time to dress make for myself these days. It'd take a day to make a dress. So, anyway. so that's, as I said, that's too long. So now we can just cut across. So let's turn this. Did that go in there? It did. Let's turn this the right side out. Um... Dorothy doesn't have a craft shop. Oh, the video on Roman Black. I, I, I must update that. One of these looks a little bit too square. I'm just going to go over that again. I'm not round enough. Um, yes, that, that could be curvier. Only a little bit, but you know. While I'm here, I may as well do it again. That looks better. They would make nice gift bags. I was saying in the um, in the video that I did, it's you'd make a gift bag out of it, but then I think the bag would be more of a gift. Um, that's better. But I, I love the idea of making your own gift bags because, um, of course, they they're going to be used year after year. You may even get the gift bag that you made back again. <laughs> I'd be a little bit miffed if somebody just kept it and then wrapped yours up in paper. To be honest, right? I'm going to press that because things look so much nicer when they're pressed. I normally leave that to the end, but um, I'll do it now. Um, if you have, oh, I keep meaning to bring it down. If you've got a tailor's ham or one of those um, sleeve ham things that we've got on the website, perfect for this because I don't want to squash that so it's two dimensional. I could give that a little bit of shape there. There we go. And this ironing mat won't quite fit inside it. So that, that would have been ideal, but there you go, didn't bring it. Let's make those seams a bit a bit like that as well. So the bag keeps its shape more. I haven't put the lining in yet, but I just thought we'd skip ahead a little bit and do this. Um, Fiona, yes, if you have a look on my Facebook page, um, I th that must have been on YouTube as well. On the 2nd of January 2021, that's where I made an ironing mat. Um, Kim, for this one, I have used Velizeline G700, which is a woven medium weight interfacing. I thought um, a fusible fleece might be a little bit too thick because, of course, it's a drawstring, I want it to all gather up. Um, but without, I mean, that, it, it does kind of stand alone ish. Um, without any kind of interfacing, you'd get that. So it, it, it has a little bit of structure, but it's not stiff. Right, I'm going to do this all over again with the lining. So if you want to go and put the kettle on, see you in five minutes. <laughs> so just like I did before. Um, yes, I have. I've got my coffee already, Gina. It's been down here already. Um, just like before. Let's p 
pin this. Again, I am, I'd normally be a little bit more careful. I'm rushing this a little bit, I will admit. I want to come to the corners, snip into the seam allowance. Don't snip too far or you'll have, you'll have holes in your bag. And this time we're going to leave a, do you know what, I'm not going to pin it, that'll be quicker. I'm going to leave a turning gap in one side as well. Um, just big enough to get your hands through. So there's my turning gap. And let's go down here. I'm asked that one a lot, Fiona, that's why, that's why I remembered that one. Again, I have snipped into the seam allowance here, so I'm just going to curve this in as we go. So I'm just matching up the edges of the fabric. Try not to pull the fabric at this point because um, the curved sections are cut on the bias, so it will stretch. Right, approaching the next curve, so snipping. No, I'm all right. I've, uh, I've got some water down here as well, Gina. Mm, okay, I'm back to the beginning. But do pin that normally. Well, unless you're confident. Just watch one of your videos. For Oh, that video. Who is that? Kate. Oh, that is my favourite video on YouTube. I think there's are there two of them or three of them. That was in the days before. Um, I don't think you could only upload a video of half an hour or something. But when you first start, you're not allowed all of this time. Um, but yeah, Alfie, my old, he was such a character. He was lovely. He was a um, English bull terrier um, mastiff cross. He was a, like a big donkey, but he loved a chair. It, it was quite bizarre. Any, any chair, just loved a chair. Um, so I did a video where I'm covering a bucket chair and of course he wanted to sit on it because he loved a chair. So I had to bring in another chair for him to sit on while I was covering the chair, but then every time I turned my back, he was back on the chair that I was covering again. So if you if you kind of fast forward through the videos, he's up here, he's down there, he's up there, he's down there. Then the chair comes in, then he's back. He's, he was all over the place, it was hilarious. But he used to... Um, um, He'd just try and sit on, like on, on this, I've got a little kind of swivel stool here. He'd try and sit on the back of this, he'd be trying to climb up. He'd try and sit on the back of a dining chair. This is a dog that's this big. As you're sitting on it, he'd just want to sit here. Um, but the funniest thing was um, we bought a deck chair. And of course they swing, don't they? His legs are all over the place. It was like Bambi on ice, trying to get on this blooming deck chair. Um, PJ loves, yeah, that's, I love that video. Brian says he's always loved Alfie. Have you seen the one of him singing as well? <laughs> Has a beautiful singing voice. Beautiful. That's a good idea, Laura. Packing socks and pants separately in a suitcase. You need a drawstring bag for that. Pretty good considering no pins. I'll just snip into the seam here and then we'll do the same on the other side. <laughs> yeah, Debbie. Yeah, I used to do a lot of that. I covered so many bucket chairs. I, mind you, I covered one for one of my friends to match her headboard, which I covered as well in the bedroom. That was really pretty. I think it was Laura Ashley fabric. And then one of my friends said, oh, can you, can you cover it in something really crazy for me? So I bought some um, laminated fabric, which was white with huge, brightly coloured spots all over it. What a nightmare that fabric was to work with. And uh, it took me ages to do it, like days and days to do it. And um, I never actually saw it in her house. I think she hated it. She said, cover it in something crazy. That's what she got. Mind you, laminated fabric to sit on, you'd stick to it in the summer, wouldn't you? So maybe that's, maybe that's why Denise loved watching off. I know, missing. See, Bobbin doesn't sing. It's funny, my, um, my grand dog used to adore door Alfie. He's a Tibetan Terry. He's still going strong. He's coming up for 12 years old. Um, but oh, I just adored Alfie. And he's not a singer. But when Alfie started to sing, he'd have a go. It was hilarious. Anybody got singing dogs? Alfie could sing in tune as well. If you went la la la, I'd go oh. So talented, that dog. Anyway. He was a big softie, Rosine. He thought he was little. 
That's why I thought it could fit onto the back of the dining chair when you're sitting on it. Okay, I should show you what I'm doing. Oh, you know what I'm doing. Um, the singing, I oh, know, Kate. I had a complaint about that. Um, don't you know that recorders hurt dogs' ears? And they don't like it, and they sing because they, uh, they're, they're not liking it. He'd go and find that recorder and fetch it and drop it so that he'd play it. That's certainly not a dog that didn't like the recorder. Oh, with Bobbin. Uh, oh, is it in that one as well? Thank you for posting that. Um, spring collections on the website. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> right. So I've got the, uh, the gusset into the lining as previous, so we need to chop the top of that off. Missed you live, just come back from having my hair done. Oh, Denise, you look lovely. We were just saying about Denise's hair, looks lovely. Missing dog, but a Tibetan, oh, a Tibetan terror. <laughs> yeah, but, um, Bert's a bit like that. So right, oh, need to put the strap on now. So this is going to go across each side of the gusset facing downwards and I'm just going to sew that right into the center you can make that longer if you wanted to or if you are going to use it as a, as a handbag no reason why you can't you could put some um, patch pockets on the inside maybe or make the strap longer and even put a slider on it if you wish Greyhound Maisie likes to make a wooing noise, sort of a cross between singing and howling. Now, but Bobbin just does a really loud bark, frightens her death after. Because she, she's, when, when I'm working from the house, we've got um, it's an old stone house, it used to be a bakery, so the, you know, the walls are that thick. So that's the depth of the window. And she actually has a little step ladder to get up and sit in the window. So when people walk past, they get a jolly good barking at. She's wagging her tail, she's not nasty, but she frightens them to death. It's quite, quite funny sometimes. Mm. Um, so bear with me a sec. A cocker spaniel that used to sit on the small wall in the garden and tilt its head to make... Oh, like it. Oh, they know, don't they? They know how to uh, catch your eye and make you go, oh. <laughs> right, stick that in there. Mm -hmm. There. And in there. Um, right, let's pop that inside there. Don't know, Alexis. Not not going to comment any more on that affair because that's what they want, really, isn't it? So I'm lining up the outer and the lining pieces around the top and matching up the seams. So you can pop a few pins in there if you want to make sure that that's exactly matched. And then I'm going to sew all the way around the top. So we'll have the accessory compartment off the machine. And just sew around. Really pleased with this. It's lovely fabric, isn't it? Um, it's not a, a brand new one, but um, it's one of those really classic ones. Art, art gallery fabrics, this one. So it's really nice quality. Spin this over here. And literally go all the way around. Just match up the seam there. Alexandra's bussets bark so loudly they make the doorbell ring and the piano vibrate make, <laughs> make a noise. Do they set off your Alexa as well? That'd be funny. So the thing is, they, they only know one word, don't they? So I suppose whether it's wanting your attention, I know there's different kind of levels of barking. But um, all one word, whether they want your attention or they've seen somebody off or they want to play or they're hungry or, or whatever. I'm in Lincolnshire, Rita. Right, so that's sewn around there. Let's now turn this the right side. Oh, did I leave the gap? You didn't tell me this time, did you? I normally get capital letters for that. Um, I, I reversed to leave a turning gap, then carried on sewing. Never quite left the gap. I blame, I blame you a lot, you just talk too much, you do. And I know I haven't got a quick on pick. Oh, or have I? Yes, I did. Where did I? Oh, now then. 
Somebody advised leaving it in here, which I didn't, which maybe, oh, no, which maybe I should have done. Somebody else said it was in that little box, but I think I took it out of there. See, if you don't put things in their place, you lose them, don't you? I'll use my scissors. So I need to make an owl. I need to make a little owl. Secondary half yard project carol is tool belt. There is a pattern for this one. Um, and I'm thinking, I'm, I've purely set, I make all of these things for me, to be honest. Um, if I'm in the garden, I've got somewhere to, to put my gardening gloves when I take them off or my um, secateurs or something like that. If I'm in the sewing room, I could keep bits and bobs that I'm using as I'm walking around. I don't generally wear things with pockets in. Um, if I'm out walking the dog, I can just stick treats and, well, she has cheese, and, um, and a lead and whatnot in there when she's not wearing it. Um, if you're a DIYer, you could keep those bits and bobs in it. So it's, um, it's kind of, you just wear it like a belt. So that's secondary project. I thought that may, might be quite useful for me. It's all, it's all about me. Uh, right, just unpicking some of these. It is it entirely, entirely your fault, Kate. Entirely your fault. Not as a new person, but you lot. You just talk, talk, talk. Don't give me a chance to concentrate. You could use it for your... <laughs> Anne, jolly good idea. I need a pocket to keep me quick on picking, so good idea. <laughs> to stick your own picker to the side. I tell you what, I've got one of those little cat face magnets somewhere. That I wonder if they're magnetic, I'll just stick it on there. Not that I use it an awful lot, to be fair, you know, so... Ne never have to replace mine, they never go blunt. Margaret's looking forward to a pink pencil. No, Trish, this is a Marks and Spencer's frock. Um, yeah, it's quite pretty, isn't it? It's a, it's a jersey, it's a, a stretch one. Uh, the jungle fabric that you used for this bag, nice to sew with. Look, this one, yeah, it's just cotton, Laura. It's not a heavy canvas or anything like that. That's, um, I think that's sold out, actually. I'm not sure if we can get more of that. I think that we, we have very much the same taste, I think, you and me. So I'll, I'll pick something to make something out of, and by the time I get to show it to you, it's sold out. I just space on my sewing machine. Oh, oh, thank you for reminding me of that one, Rosina. I was thinking, um, it ca keeps coming up to the last week in the month when we have a sew along. Um, and I've, um, oh, the mouse on my shelf. I bet she's done that. You see, it's still there, same place as last week. Um, yeah, for the sew along, because I like to get them ahead so I can show you in advance what we're going to make so you can get any materials that you like, and then I forget. Um, and everything's very last minute, but I was going to make one of those little pin cushions that has pockets on it as well. Jolly good idea. Um, might do that this afternoon. Might do it tomorrow. Might do some gardening this afternoon. Did some gardening yesterday. So, uh, can you plant? Can you plant chrysanthemums outside? I bought a chrysanthemum from Marks and Spencer's when I got my frock the other day, and. Um, I wanted to put it in, I've, I've, I'm making a little rockery and I wanted to put it in the rockery but then I thought if I've bought it from inside the supermarket maybe it's not an outside plant. So is it going to die if I put it outside? Any, anybody, any botanists um, out there can let me know. Am I going to kill, am I going to kill my chrysanthemum if I stick it in my rockery? Hmm. So that is going to be, Rosina thank you, that is going to be the next sew along, so I need to put some thought into that one and uh, come up with something a bit different. I like to do that, you know, that when um, that's another thing I like about sewing. Taking an idea, there's a million pin cushions out there, but putting a twist on it or making it easier to sew or something like that. You harden it off first, so do I stick it outside and then plant it after a bit? I'll maybe try that. Yeah, it's got roots, Jean. Yeah, it's in a, in a pot about that big and it's got three massive flowers on it. It's like that. So it's a nice little thing. Oh, Jane, see you next week. Thank you for joining us today. Um, Planted it. Do you bring it in in the winter, though, Janice? Oh, I've sewn up the hole, the turning gap. Because I'd, I'd never, I'd forget. It, it's going to have to, once it's out there, it's going to have to stay out there. Acclimatise it by putting it outside during the day and bring it in at night for a week or two. Thank you, Alexandra. Well, you're very knowledgeable, you lot, aren't you? Tracy says chrysanthemums find outside in the summer, but won't survive the winter. 
sewing weights. That's another good one, Patricia. It'll die back and grow in the next season. Right, it's, it's going in. I'll leave it outside for a bit, like you say, for a few nights. And then in the rockery it goes. Just going to iron this before I top stitch it. Thank you, Teen Renelf. Hmm. If I've got any more gardening questions, I should be sure to ask you. <gasps> My wisteria died, but I think it hadn't got very much room for its roots. We had a wisteria that grew, uh, in fact we had two, um, all the way around one side of the house. Never did flower very well, to be honest, but, um, but it grew all the way around the house and then died last year. Don't know why, any ideas there? But it's, it's going into ground that's quite rocky, so I think it, it must have struggled for about eight years and then just thought, do you know what, I'm giving up with this. Um. <laughs> I love that, Kim. Sewers are often sewers too. <laughs> that is brilliant. Ooh. Oh, we could use that as a slogan on some fabric, couldn't we? Sewers, sewers or sewers? <gasps> Bring it in at night, says Debbie. Yeah, I shall do that. We'll have a go and see what happens. Um, I know you're a smart lot, aren't you, Anne? Mind you, there's so many of you out there. I'm sure if I asked how to do brain surgery at home, somebody's going to come back with the answer. Maybe, maybe, maybe not that. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? I've got a sewing machine. I can stitch it up. I'm just going to top stitch around the top. Looking nice, isn't it? I'm really pleased with that. Uh, right, so I'm just going to top stitch around the top seam. So let's go a bit longer on this. In a pot daytime, night for a week, and then plant out when the soil is warm. Because um, apparently we're going to have storms again, aren't we? Thank you, Kate. I should have commission from Marks and Spencers. Um, okay. I've shut up for a bit. You can tell I'm trying to concentrate, can't you? So literally all the way around the top. And that's quite important because it helps to keep the lining together with the, um, with the outer bag. Um, the drought last year. Oh, I never thought about that, Rosina. I'll have to read back through all of these, um, this advice later. Put mine in the garden and the dog's head. <laughs> uh, dog's head. <laughs> Alfie, that... Alfie used to bury things. Um, Bobbin isn't a barrier at all. Um, Alfie, you, you couldn't throw a ball for him. You, you'd, you'd throw it and he'd look at you. So he'd done that for. Um, Bobbin loves a ball. She loves a ball and a stick and chases like, like a typical dog would do. Um, but yeah, Alfie used to bury things in the garden. We're still finding them now. I mean, he died five years ago. Still finding things buried in the garden. It's hilarious. Um, the side tie bag is on my website, Leslie, debbieshawsewing.com. If you have a look on downloads at the top of the page, it's it's right there. Um, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> when the kids were little, I used to make them um, pancakes every, every day for breakfast. Before they went to school, it was pancakes. And then I'd make a, a small pancake, and that was for Alfie. And if you didn't want to eat it, you'd go and bury it somewhere. But I came into the kitchen one day, and there was the pancake on the floor with a sock on top of it. So that was his idea of burying it. He went to the laundry basket, picked out a sock and put it on top and it's out. That's, nobody can see that thing, can they? That's buried and safe for later. Hilarious. Um, I was staring grows up a trellis along a wire and pergola. Oh, that sounds lovely. Dig up and store a cover with compost in October. Oh, that's a good idea. Wisteria prune long stems by half in summer and then down to two buds in January or February. I remember that because we planted another one. Not in the same spot, but we have, uh, we have planted another one. Red ribbon in the top now. Um, so, reach I did, I went up to a three actually on this one, forgot to mention. I do go longer for a top stitch. So this is going to be, I think it looks nice. And oh, so that needs to be the width of the bag and then a little bit more. So that's doubled over like that. And then we'll do another one, the same, the same one. Um, but a longer stitch, particularly on fabric that's getting a little bit thicker, um, doesn't tighten. So a very small stitch can tighten a little bit somehow on thick fabrics like that. Um, snip off the dead hairs, tease out the roots, plant out, water, water and stuff. Thank you, Jackie. You are a bunch of sewers, aren't you? 
Uh, oh, hang on, missed that one. Um, I love the bag. I'm going to make it with a longer crossbody strap. I mean, a wheelchair and it would be perfect for when I'm out and about for my purse. That's a good idea because it's not it's not thick, so it could easily be a crossbody bag and sit at, at your side without. Um, yeah, it's a good idea. Um, put some pockets in it as well. There's plenty of room inside there, so if you wanted to put patch pockets onto it, that'd be good. Um, and although you know, there's no. Um, hardware to fasten it or anything the drawstring does make it nice and secure as well that's a good idea hide things in the house plant but oh Alfie's done that as well bury well it's soil isn't it so it's going to bury things in there okay so I'm going to just pop a safety pin on here double it over so it doesn't tear the ribbon and first one is going in this direction And so I'm just winding Facebook down a little bit so I can see your recent comments. Um, oh, Sylvia's battering the laptop again. See you Wednesday. Wednesday at four o'clock when we're doing some shearing. Hello, Brenda in Kentucky. Okay, so that comes through there. And I'm just going to tie those two together in a knot at the end. Uh, use the top instead of the inside to turn through. Was that for me? Yeah, so he had uh, cancer in his leg. Um, so he died when he was 11 years old, which apparently is a good old age for that breeder doll. So through here. And back around here. Heartbreaking, isn't it? You never get over it. Oh, hi, Connie. We've nearly done. <laughs> um, there is going to be, remember, a video on um, YouTube that I've already filmed, so that'll be going on in about 15 minutes. So that's obviously if you don't like the chat or you just want to make the project. Have I done two? No, I haven't done two in the same direction. I've just lost the knot inside there. Let me tie this one off. And there we go. It's nice, isn't it, Denise? I think the fabric makes it. It's lovely fabric. There's your, your knots gone. There. So that's done. So that draws up like that. And my little bag's finished. Quite oh, sweet, isn't it? I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, okay, so again, video going on in about 10 minutes' time onto YouTube. So if you wanted to make a note of all of the exact measurements for everything that I've used, it'll be on there. Um, the one that I made, if you have just joined us, is that one. So that's in the jungle fabric that I think we've sold out of now, I'm afraid. We, we do have others in the range. This one's in the uh, Arc Gallery fabrics. What was the range called? I did write it down. Uh, Rosewater Ballet, if you wanted to make exactly the same one. Um, Right, I'm going. I'm going to pop off. I've got um, I've got videos to do of curtain making for the half yard club, so I'm going to be doing that this afternoon. Um, <laughs> Alexandra, I've only got Facebook and YouTube to keep track of, so so the bees just come in. Um, so it's not too difficult. I've got two screens there I can go between. Um, Christine's just tuned in. Hello, Christine. Okay, ban and ban ban. I was, that's by and all, all mixed into one. So ban. Um, faux leather would be really good carol. You wouldn't need any interfacing with that one. Um, you can use interfacing with faux leather, but um, you, don't, you don't need it. A birthday bear fabric. That would be an interesting one. Hmm. I, shall, I shall put some thought into that. Um, see you Wednesday then, Janet. Thank you, Brian. I'm glad you liked it. Um, let me just do this over here. So... So shearing on Wednesday, oh Brenda missed a she overslept. You're allowed, Brenda. <laughs> uh, it is pretty early for in the morning for you over there. Um, let's do that there. You need to go there. It's not going to go. There we are. Um, Lynn, I'm glad you like it. Thank you. I, I love these Saturday mornings and Wednesday afternoons as well. Carol's going to our village in May Day to watch one of our granddaughters dancing. Oh, what a lovely, what a lovely day that's going to be. Bring back the birthday bear pattern. <laughs> Not down to me. 
Um, I'd, I'd put, a, put a request in on the Half Yard Club and see what the girls come up with. Um, was, oh, Susan. Five on Wednesday. Oh, thank you for reminding me. See, I forget. If I don't write things down, I forget. And sometimes when I do write things down, I can't find a book I've written them down in. Um, yeah, five o'clock on Wednesday, because I'm, I'm actually going to, um, I don't know if you'd be there, um, a stationary show at the, um, in Islington uh, at the Design Centre on Wednesday. I'm having a, a meeting with my publishers about something a little different we're working on for next year. Mm. Mm. Um, so I, I uh, oh, thank you, um, Carol. So yeah, I should, I should be back by five. I should be back by four, but you know, I didn't, I didn't want to push it a bit in case <laughs> I get stuck somewhere or something. I don't know. Just in case. So yeah, five o'clock. I'll post. I'll post on Facebook to remind myself, and I'll post on YouTube to subscribers there as well. Thank you for reminding me. Um, and we're out of we're out of stock of the irons, but they're on order. So maybe Tuesday or Wednesday they should be back in stock again. Um, thank you, Janet. I'm glad you liked it. Five o'clock, yeah. Five, five o'clock Wednesday, five o'clock Wednesday. Must be. You've got better memories than me. Anyway, I'm going to go. Um, off to Grantham to see a great granddaughter. Oh, how lovely. Um, glad we're doing five pin girls and watch live, says Leslie. Okay. All right, then I'm going to go off and, and uh, get, me, get me curtain fabric ready. And I shall see you again Wednesday at five o'clock. Do enjoy the rest of your weekend. And thank you for joining me today. It's been fun, hasn't it? I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.